I'm currently in Elat, and a few hours ago, a drone from Iraq struck the IDF naval base in Israel's most southern city, only a few kilometers away from here, that direction, inside the sea. Three senior Hamas terrorists were eliminated in a face-to-face -face encounter in the Shifa hospital in Gaza City. And meanwhile, the IDF ramps up air operations in Lebanon with a massive attack in Aleppo, Syria, while the IDF is preparing for a major war in the north. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 178th day of the war with Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and others. It is important for me to announce that some of the most brutal terrorists that Israel has been facing for almost 20 years, terrorists who murdered many Israelis and hurt many more, but were released as part of the deal to release the Israeli hostage Gilad Shalit in 2011, were eliminated in recent days. They were hiding in the Shifa hospital in Gaza City like the cowards they are, hiding behind Palestinian civilians who tried to use them as human shields. The operation began when the Shin Bet intelligence services discovered that these men were in the hospital. This information was passed on to the Shayeta 13 Naval Commando Forces, the Duvdevan Anti-Terrorist Units, and the Nahal Infantry Brigade. Together, these units made a plan to isolate the part of the hospital where these terrorists were hiding and move in to confront them. The sections where they were hiding included the emergency room and even the maternity ward, where a large cache of weapons and ammunition were also discovered. Sadly, a nurse working in the emergency room was caught in the crossfire between the IDF troops and the Hamas terrorists and was killed. Otherwise, hundreds of medical staff and patients who were in the emergency room and the maternity ward when the fighting broke out were safely evacuated, depriving Hamas of their use as human shields. Some of those who tried to leave during this evacuation were recognized by facial recognition softwares as wanted terrorists and were arrested. Other terrorists surrendered of their own free will rather than fight. One of the terrorists who decided to go down fighting fired on the IDF from inside a medicine closet that was part of the emergency room, but it didn't save him as he was eliminated in a fierce exchange of fire with the IDF. Once all the terrorists had been eliminated or arrested, a search began which uncovered large amounts of weapons and ammunition hidden in the patient's pillows and beds in the ceilings and walls of the compound. Amongst them, dozens of mortar bombs, explosive devices, sniper weapons, AK-47 pistols, cartridges, explosive devices, and other ammunitions. It was during these searches that another group of armed terrorists were encountered in the stairwell. In the resulting exchange of fire, several terrorists were eliminated, and it was later determined that they included senior operatives who Israel has been pursuing for many years. We are talking about Fadi Doich, who carried out a terror attack in which four Israelis were murdered, and Zaharia Najib, who assisted in the kidnapping of the late Nachshon Vaxman. These two terrorists were dressed as midwives in an obvious attempt to conceal their true identity so they could blend in with the civilians trying to escape the fighting in the hospital. This is a very large hospital and it is literally a hornet's nest for terrorists. A few terrorists probably did manage to escape dressed as civilian patients or medical staff, but many did not. In the last 24 hours, according to Palestinian reports, as well as from the French news agency AFP, IDF tanks are leaving the Shifa hospital in Gaza City, two weeks after the operation began. It is important to note that the operation at Shifa hospital was motivated in part by Israel's determination to account for everyone who was involved in the massacre on October 7th against the Israeli communities surrounding the Gaza Strip. This includes 
the junior members of Hamas who directly participated, but it also includes those more senior Hamas terrorists who trained them, planned the attack, and sent them in. Israel will continue this action until we achieve this result with all the terrorists in the Gaza Strip. We have made good progress towards this objective in recent days, including the elimination of some very senior Hamas field commanders and operatives. So please keep helping us get the truth out by watching these videos, sharing them on YouTube, subscribing to this channel, and following us on social media. And don't forget to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Switching focus now to Israel's northern front, media portals in Syria reported in recent days that Israel launched a major air attack against targets in the city of Aleppo in the northwestern side of the country. The targets included Hezbollah's regional headquarters and transit points for weapons that are smuggled to Hezbollah from Iran through Iraq and Syria. According to Arab and foreign reports, the death toll from these attacks reached at least 44, with many more injured. Several of those killed were Hezbollah operatives and possibly also Iranian intelligence agents. It's important to point out that although the Syrian Ministry of Defense blamed Israeli jets for firing missiles that killed and wounded civilians, a large number of secondary explosions which occurred after the initial strikes are responsible for many of the casualties. These secondary explosions came from munitions that were stored in these civilian areas by Hezbollah and its allies. It's also important to take note of the extremely large size and intensity of some of these secondary explosions. The IDF knows where Hezbollah hides many of its weapons, but we don't always know how powerful these weapons are until we see the secondary explosions, some of which are quite spectacular. We imagine what would happen if those explosions took place in our cities, and we're glad we could hit those weapons before they hit us. This is a good place to once again ask you to please help us spread the truth by sharing these videos on YouTube and subscribing to this channel. If you want to support us financially so we can continue bringing you these videos, please click on the link below and make a donation. Thank you so much. Any help will enable us to bring you additional videos and share the truth. This is more important than ever because Hezbollah is continuing its plans for what it calls the Great War against Israel. We got some confirmation of that this week in a report by the Kuwaiti newspaper El Anba, which quoted a Lebanese source close to Hezbollah as saying that these preparations continue despite the setbacks Israel has dealt to Hezbollah. The source spoke of high readiness and ability to control activities on the ground and in the air. The report also included quotes from a diplomatic source in Beirut, saying that in Lebanon, they are convinced that the Israeli government has moved to an advanced and dangerous stage on the country's front, that it can be said that it started the wide war and continues to insist on dragging Hezbollah into it by attacking the organization in Syria. According to this report, most of the efforts are aimed at damaging Israel's air force as Hezbollah recognizes this control of the air is the key to Israel's military strategy. The source refused to comment on the reports that the organization possesses Russian-made S-100 and S-200 missiles, which are intended to attack aircrafts. In any event, I can tell you that Israel is changing the picture vis-a-vis -vis Hezbollah. The switch is being made from defending against Hezbollah attacks to attacking them wherever they try to hide. This is true for Beirut, Baalbek, Tayer, Zidon, Nabatia, and the entire width of the sector. And it is also true for much more distant places like Damascus. We hear bluffs and empty threats about Hezbollah's power, such as the one this Kuwaiti newspaper reported. But we know that the Lebanese population is loudly unsupported of a war against Israel. In Israel, the public knows that we have no choice but to defend ourselves against Hezbollah's aggression and return the evacuees 
back to their homes near the border. Though the IDF will increase the rate of attacks and expand the campaign against all supporters of Iran. Finally, this morning, there was a drone incursion into Eilat, the city where I am right now. It did some damage, but there were no casualties. Iranian-backed militias in Iraq claim that they attacked a vital target in Israel, but it's likely they didn't even know what they were aiming at. This is a developing story and we'll probably have more details for you in tomorrow's report. I want to conclude by paying my respects to a hero of Israel who fell yesterday defending the state of Israel. The IDF spokesman allowed publication that Sergeant Nadav Cohen, 20 years of age, from Haifa, a fighter in the 77th Battalion, fell in the battle in southern Gaza Strip. He was killed by an anti-tank missile fire. I would like to ask you to continue spreading the truth with us. Share and follow us on social media, subscribe to this channel, and most importantly, join us in prayer, as this is a spiritual war. And in order to fight a spiritual war, we need to unite in prayer. Together we will win, and thank you for standing with Israel. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.